Good morning and welcome to A Finch's Nest Podcast. This is episode number 10 and today is February the 5th and I'm coming to you from just outside of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. Today is actually a cold and snowy day so um, I'm happy to be home inside where it's nice and warm. <laughs> so I was kind of surprised that the children didn't have a snow day today from school but um, they didn't. So that's good. So they're at school and um, hopefully the snow will um, let up a little bit before they come home and uh, yeah, everybody gets home safe at the end of the day. So um, anyways, it's been a while since I podcast once again and obviously I'm just not good at doing this every two weeks like I intend to do, but life gets busy and things get in the way and you know, I do it when I can. So Uh, Today I did make some notes because I have quite a few things I wanted to talk to you about. So I will be referring to my notes from time to time. So uh, before we get started, just to let you know that you can find me on Instagram at A Finch's Nest. And uh, it's a good place to follow me because you can see some of the projects I'm working on, some of my everyday life stuff. And then I also put updates on there for when the podcast comes out. so, So you'll know when there's a new episode. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to start off with life updates. So if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that we have been patiently waiting for the arrival of a grandchild. And my sweet little granddaughter arrived on the 23rd of January. So she arrived about 12 days early and surprised us all. (laughs) So uh, that was very exciting. So she is doing really well. She is such a sweetheart oh she's the cutest thing (laughs) she's just oh I say all the time she's just perfect 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 so her name is Annie and she was seven pounds four ounces when she was born and she like I said is very healthy and doing very well so we are very grateful for that so my daughter is also uh, she's doing better now she did have um, she wasn't feeling so great last week so uh, she is slowly getting better so that's good and she's adjusting to motherhood wonderfully and she's just a nice uh, laid back you know easygoing mom so that's great so yeah so it's been very exciting and oh I just I just love her so much and love spending time with her so yeah so that's the big news around here so and partly why I haven't been getting a lot done because I've been um, spending some time with my daughter and just doing some of her her laundry and tidying up and stuff so she can rest a little bit so yeah so that's been taking my time but surely not a burden to go and hold her hold the baby for a while so mommy doesn't have to I'm always happy to do that so yeah and now that now that I know it's a girl I can plan some new knitting projects and you know unfortunately when I was doing my knitting before she was born everybody thought this baby was going to be a boy except for me (laughs) and because everybody else was thinking it was a boy I actually knit a lot more for a boy than I did for a girl and so um yeah now I have now I have lots of knitting to do so some of the things that I had finished that I was going to show you of course I don't have now because she is using them so um I'm going to try to insert pictures which I've never done before so we'll see how that goes but I'm going to talk about some of the things that I made show you the patterns in the yarn but and then I will try to insert photos and if I can't figure out how to do that I'll post the photos on Instagram and you can see them there so and of course the little sweater that I made her looks far cuter on her than it would have looked just me showing it to you anyway so so that's good so anyway so I'm going to get into some of the things that I finished and like I said there's quite a few things that I can't show you, but I will try to put photos up in the corner uh, if I can figure out how to do that. So, first finished object um, was her sweater. So, like I said, her name is Annie. So, if I keep referring to Annie, that's <laughs> who I'm talking about. So, I had knit, if you follow me before, you knew, you'll know that I was knitting um, a little sweater set for a boy and for a girl for them to come home from the hospital. So the little girl's sweater that I did was this one here, except that I did it in the long sleeve. So it's a cute little cardigan, but I did long sleeves and I did the hat and the booties, which, oh, the booties are on this page here. 
and um, I did it in pink. So the yarn that I used was the uh, Knit Picks Capretta in the fingering weight in the blush colorway. And this knit up really, really nice. And it's really soft. And it's a pretty pink. It's not like a harsh baby pink, just very, very soft. Of course, there's a glare from the window again, but there we go. So yeah, it's it's really pretty. It looks it looks really cute on her. So she was able to wear it home from the hospital. So that was two weeks ago now. And she so when she wore it the first time, my daughter had to roll up the sleeves twice because the sleeves were a little long. And I saw her yesterday and she was wearing it and the sleeves weren't rolled up at all. And I'm like, she's grown so much already. So um and unfortunately that's the only sweater that I've knit her. So um I bet in two weeks, maybe, it's going to be too small, so I'm going to have to um, knit her something else. So I do have a pattern chosen that I will try to remember to show you later. But anyway, so this pattern is in this Sublime book, and the pattern is called the Little Posy Yoked Cardi. So it was, um, it's a great pattern, it's very well written. But it was a lot of work and I don't know if you can see from the photos this would be much easier to see if I had the project here but there's little daisies all embroidered along the yoke and the hat and the booties and so you put those on when when you're finished knitting it and it took hours and hours <laughs> to embroider all those daisies on so it was a very time-consuming project for such a little item now, for her, it was totally worth it, but I'm not sure I'd be in any big hurry to knit this again. And it's not because of the pattern, it was just because it was a big time commitment. And because it's a fingering weight, of course, it knits up slower to begin with. So, and then with all those flowers that you have to add, it was just a very time consuming project. <laughs> so anyways, it looks beautiful and I'm glad I did it. But um, yeah, so that's the pattern and this is the arm. So I'm happy with how that turned out. And now I just wish I had knit more pink. So anyways, I will try to insert a photo of her wearing it and you can see how it looks a little better in the photos. Um, the other thing that I did was I made all the receiving blankets for my daughter. So I had made two piles. I made a whole bunch of boy ones and a whole bunch of girl girl ones so I did take a photo of those as well which again I will try to insert um, yeah for my receiving blankets I like to have oversized receiving blankets so I just I'll buy um, a piece of fabric at, at the fabric store and if it's 40 inches wide then I buy a 40 inch length and just make it a big square so I just hem all the edges and I just I loved swaddling my babies in them when they were little and I just found my baby slept so well because they were so nice and cozy and swaddled and so uh, my daughter wanted to do the same thing so I was able to make those for her and um, yeah I had some really cute little girly prints that uh, she's enjoying now so uh, and they're being well used so that's good so I did make the receiving blankets um, the other thing I had made was the beloved bonnet by Tin Can Knits and uh, for that one I had used a fingering weight from Lizzie Ann Yarns and I had lost the tag so I don't know the colorway. Um, held double with a strand of mohair and it turned out really cute. So I had done the very first size in the pattern which I think is um, maybe zero to three months or newborn and it's actually still too big for her so so that's good so it'll probably fit maybe in another month or so. So it'll be nice for springtime. And yeah, so that's uh, that was a good one. And I really liked how that, that one turned out. So again, I'll try to put a photo in. Um, another one that I had made her was the Rigmore's bonnet. And I talked about it earlier in one of my other podcasts and I had shown it. And when I knit it, I was not thrilled with how it turned out part of it was the yarn and anyways it has turned out to be the best little hat so it fits her so perfectly and I find with the, the hat 
that's right. I find with this hat, because she's always being held and cuddled and, you know, wrapped up, I find the hat is constantly falling in her face and you're constantly fixing the hat. Where the Rigmore's bonnet, it fits her head so well and because it's tied under her chin, it doesn't move. So it's, it's really been a great hat. So for that one, I had done the smallest size as well, which I think was a newborn size and it just fits her now. So even my daughter said she's been wearing it on her like every day because she knows it's not going to fit much longer. So I'm definitely going to make another one of those, even though I didn't really enjoy the pattern the first time. Um, it, it fits very well and it looks adorable on her. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had her out yesterday. We had to run to the mall for a little while. So I met my daughter there and she had her little bonnet on. She just looks so cute. So that turned out to be much better than I had anticipated. So I will definitely make her another one in the next size up for spring. So what else did I make? I made her a pair of booties and this, and I just used a scrap that I had, but this is my favorite baby booty pattern. So this is the church mouse. We ones stay on baby booties. And this pattern is written for you to use a fingering, a DK or a worsted weight. So it's perfect because any scraps that you have, you can use this pattern for. Now I did make another pair of these so I can show you what they look like in a minute, but um, so I made her a little pair of yellow um, sort of variegated ones. They were really cute. So I, I used this pattern again, but this is definitely my go-to baby booty pattern. So if you're looking for a good baby booty pattern and because it has like a drawstring tie on it, I don't know if you can see it, they do stay on, which is nice because a lot of them don't. <laughs> so anyway, so that's a good pattern that I would highly recommend. So I'm trying to think if there was anything else I made her. It's a good job I made a list today because I can't remember. No, I think that was it. So now I'll show you some of the baby boy stuff that I made um, and finished. And now it will just be put away for another special baby that comes along. And I might keep these till I have a grandson. I might give them to somebody else. We'll just have to wait and see, but um, anyways. So this is the little boy's outfit that I made to come home from the hospital in. So here's the little sweater, which I think is adorable. <laughs> and I did brown, which is unusual for a little boy. I know normally, well, the way I am, I normally do blue and pink. But she had a little sleeper that was um, like an off-white color with little animals all over that were brown for a little boy. So that's why I decided to do this this little pattern anyways the little double breasted coat with a garter stitch front there just a plain back this is a really cute pattern though it has little details like this little split hem here <laughs> which I think it's adorable and then these are the booties that I just spoke about so I made these to go with it because I didn't really like the booties that were in the book that went with it so these are, I made those ones and then I made this little hat which I think is adorable <laughs> with little ears so you know as much as you know I've done all this work and it's not getting used now um, I'm not terribly disappointed just because the pink outfit was so much work if I had to have put that one away for somebody else, I would have been a little disappointed, I think, just because of the hours and hours that I spent working on it. This one knit up faster because it was a DK weight and it just wasn't nearly as involved. So as much as it would be fun to see somebody wearing it now, I'm not quite as sad to put this one away as I would have been that pink one. <laughs> so anyways, this one's ready for a little grandson or a special little boy. So, um, yes that's fun so the patterns I used so for the booties like I said I used the church mouse little ones stay on baby booties just I would highly highly recommend that pattern and the coat is in this book by King Cole and I think this book has a lot of really cute designs in it 
but it's this one here, the little car coat. And then the hat is also in this book. Somewhere. <laughs> hmm. It is in this book. Oh, here it is. And it's called the stripey teddy hat. I just didn't put the stripes on it. But that's the hat that I used there. So, yeah, I would recommend this pattern. It was very well written and it I think it just has really cute details and yeah, it was I would highly recommend it. So, easy to follow. Turned out really cute. So, so I'll put this away for someday. And the yarn that I used for that was the Barocco Ultra Wool DK. And the color is 83104. And I talked about this yarn before. This is one of my favorite yarns to use. It's fairly reasonably priced, knits up beautifully. And this is the main color of my Soul Dotna that I knit in the summer. So, yeah. So that will go away for now. Uh, the other thing I made for a little boy was all the receiving blankets for a little boy. So this one's really cute. It's got animals all over it with funny, cute little sayings on it. It's adorable. And then this one says, I love mommy and daddy. <laughs> and then a cute polka dot. And then some foxes. And oh, I guess it's raccoons and foxes. Cute though. And then monkeys. So again, these will just be put away. Now these, I give as gifts all the time when people have babies. I usually give them two receiving blankets and a, um, a hand knit hat. So now I'm, I have a nice stash of boy ones to give as gifts, so that's nice. And now maybe I'll make some girl ones and then I'll just have them on hand for when I need a baby gift. But I've given these a lot as gifts and people love them. They, yeah, they do appreciate them. And there's something very useful when you have a baby, especially <laughs> for cleaning up spit up and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, so those are the boy uh, receiving blankets I made. So the only other finished item I have right now is a hat that I made for Annie. And yeah, I I made this before she was born thinking, what if it is a girl and what if she comes before Valentine's Day? <laughs> and I saw this hat by Susan B. Anderson called Love and Hearts Hat. And I thought, oh, I have to make it. Now I did change it slightly so at the top you can see there there's a, a heart on the top and I just I wasn't in the mood that night so I just put a pom-pom on the top. So anyways this is how it turned out and I think it's adorable. <laughs> oh, oh. There we go. So I haven't washed it or blocked it or anything but I think it's really cute. So I'm trying to think what size I made. It would be the smallest one on here. Oh yeah, it's just the finished circumference. So it's the 12, 12 inches. So the very smallest one. So hopefully it fits her next week for Valentine's Day. <laughs> and I did buy her a little sleeper the other day that's white with little red hearts all over it and a big red heart on the bum. <laughs> So that'll be cute for Valentine's Day. So hopefully it fits because it is really tiny, but she's still pretty small. So, And the yarn I used for that was just some Cascade that I had in my stash. And uh, yeah, this is a great workhorse yarn. <laughs> so the, the off-white is color number 871. The red is 1922. And the pink is 894. So yeah, so I was happy with how that turned out. So I'll have to get some photos of her wearing it and post that on Instagram too. And hopefully it fits. So that's it for finished objects. So yeah, unfortunately a lot of my finished objects were gone. <laughs> I didn't get to show you, but that's okay. 
We were happy that she arrived early. So now works in progress. So I only have three right now uh, that I'm sort of working on. Um, I am doing a test knit right now, so that's kind of taking all of my knitting time. So these other projects are kind of just sitting right now, but I will get back to them soon. So the first one is the Snuggle is Real. And I talked about this pattern the last time I um, podcast, and this is by Maxim, and I can't see it. I think it's CYR. Uh, I know he's from Quebec. And I've seen this on quite a few podcasts now. So it's just a beautiful cowl. And it, it has a line lining and these cute drawstrings. So the pattern calls for DK weight for the, the main color, which is this light gray. And then the contrast color. And then the lining and the um, drawstrings are done in a mohair held double. Now I find that mohair hair makes me itchy, so I'm not going to do that. So I think I'm just going to use the leftover capretta from the baby's outfit to line mine. And it should be okay, I think. And this is really soft, so I think it'll feel really nice against my skin. So I had talked about this project before, and I was using this yarn, which is um, a, one of the yarns of Richard de Vries. And, um, the tag says that this is a DK weight, but I'm starting to wonder if it's not. So to me, it, it looks like maybe a fingering. It's hard to tell. But anyways, well, as I was knitting it, so this was my contrast color and this dark gray, Patton's Croix, which I was holding double, um, is the main color. So I did the... Um, I feel like I'm not thinking well today. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so I had done the ribbing at the bottom in the dark gray held double. And I, again, I talked about this before, this turquoise is just a provisional cast on, so that's leaving, that won't be staying. So this, I did the ribbing in the dark gray, which turned out really nice, very thick and squishy. And then when I started knitting the body of the cowl, I thought that this yarn was not knitting up in my mind like a DK. And of course I didn't gauge swatch or anything for this project because it's just a cowl. So anyways, I was going along and I thought, no, this is not, it's not looking big enough, wide enough to fit comfortably around my neck. So I ended up putting it on a larger cable and went and tried it on and I just felt like it was it was too tight and it was not fitting like the pattern. So I ended up ripping it out. So I had this other yarn in my stash, which is from Yarn Indulgences. It's the Zed Merino in the Sugar Plum colorway, which is a DK and it's 100% uh, fine merino wool. So I had this, which is like different shades of pink and a bit of gray. So because I knew this one was a DK and when I put it up against this one, it really in my mind is very different. This one is much plumper. So anyways, I ripped everything back to the ribbing and started again <laughs> with a different yarn. So anyways, it's, I think it's knitting up much better now and hopefully will fit more the way I would like it to fit. So I really haven't made any progress on it because by the time I ripped it out and re-knit, I think I'm kind of just back to where I was before. But I know I'll be happier in the end. So yeah, so if I do this and then I'll use this as my lining and the ties, I think that'll be nice. And I had a lot of this left. It, I think I only used two balls of this, not even two full balls to do that whole baby outfit. So there's a lot of yardage and for a small item I didn't use very much. So I think I have like two or three of these left. So I think that'll be the perfect combination for this. So I'm looking forward to getting back to this. This is kind of a nice relaxing knit. It's pretty mindless. 
so yeah I'd like to get back to it and I'd like to be wearing it <laughs> but too many other things calling me right now so for now it's just gonna wait and uh, but I'm happy that I I discovered the issue with the other yarn quickly and was able to rip it out before I got any further on it so yeah so this is being housed in a this is Brown's bag and I don't know if I've told you about this bag before but quite a while ago when Jody was kind of just getting into these she was looking for people to knit some of the swatches for her so this this fabric was made out of the swatch that I knit for her so those are all my little stitches that I knit so it's kind of fun and it was nice that this was a gift from her to say thank you for helping her with the swatches so yeah so I enjoy that bag and it's fun to see it all the time and know that those are the stitches that I created so yeah and another project that I'm working on well I started and I haven't haven't been working on it lately but I will get back to it is a pair of socks and these will be for me when I'm done but the pattern is called the Merlin socks so I have a friend at my knit night and she designs patterns and this is one of her patterns so it has a um, really nice cable down the side and then three little ones in the back it's probably very hard to see there so yeah, and then her, you can find her on Instagram at hand knit by cam, K-A-M, and I'll put a, put her Instagram down below, but she has a few really nice patterns and she has some nice shawl patterns if you're into knitting shawls and a few really nice sock patterns as well. So I started these soon after Christmas, but then I started this test knit and that's kind of taken over now. <laughs> So this is the yarn that I'm using for these. I think this is gorgeous. It's gray with some purples and different shades of gray, different shades of purple. And this yarn is by Three Dog Knits Fiber Arts. And the color is Lucky One. And it's an 80-20 sock yarn. So I haven't got too, too far. Hopefully you can see the pattern on here. So this is the front of the sock. So you can see these little twisted cables. So you do two smaller ones and then a larger one. And two smaller ones. It's cute. So that's the front and then the back. You have two of the cables running down the back really nice nice pattern and I think this is a good combo of yarn and pattern sometimes it doesn't work out so well <laughs> but this time I feel like this was a good choice of yarn for the, the pattern so I'm happy with these and I love the colors so I'll be anxious to get back to those at some point but right now there's more pressing things to be done so <laughs> these are just waiting so good that we can just you know start these projects and they just patiently wait until we get back to them <laughs> yeah. so and sometimes with me that takes a long time to get back to them but that's okay so the next big thing and this is a big thing is I am doing a test knit so I am testing a new pattern by Isabel Kramer and the pattern is called the night groove or night groove it's called night groove i have some notes on there so i'm just folding it over but this is what the finished object looks like gorgeous absolutely gorgeous uh, color work sweater so I had seen the testing call and then um, I had seen that this amazing yarn dyer was offering yarn support for this particular or for someone who was doing this particular test knit so I contacted her to see if you know she had already found somebody who was going to do the test knit and she said that no she hadn't and if I was interested 
she would be happy to send me the yarn to do this amazing sweater. <laughs> so obviously that is an offer that does not come every day. And for me, I, you know, I've said before, I'm a single mom and I would n never be able to justify um, buying indie dyed yarn to knit something like this. I just would never be able to. And so to be able to test knit it and then to have yarn support was amazing. And I was just so excited. And so um, I worked with the dyer and um, we came up with a color combination that I was able to choose from her website that, um, yeah, she was great. She just said, you know, whatever colors you want, it doesn't matter, you, you pick, it's your sweater and I want you to be happy with it. So it was just so incredibly generous and I'm so grateful and so excited to have such a beautiful sweater. So the yarn dyer is on the round and I would highly recommend her yarn. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is her plush four ply. So it is a superwash merino fingering weight, 230 yards to 100 grams. And the colorways are Robin's Egg and Eclipse. And this is how far I've gotten on it. And I could not be happier with this sweater. <laughs> I'm so excited at how this is turning out. So the Robin's Egg is the lighter color and the Eclipse is the darker color. Now the darker color, I don't know if you can tell from here, it's kind of, it's kind of gray, but it's also kind of navy. I can see from the light in my window that it is getting a little bit blown out, but it is a gorgeous color. And this robin's egg is stunning. And again, I don't know if you can see, but there's all different shades of blue in there. But then every now and again, there's like a little pop of purple or I think there might even be a little bit of like a goldy green color in there. Anyways, I am super excited with this and I've been able to try it on as I'm going because uh, it's from a top down sweater. So that's great. So, so far it's fitting perfectly and I am so excited <laughs> about this sweater. So the only thing with this sweater is the timeline for the test knit was fairly short. And because I was working with the dyer and the yarn had to come from the US, uh, I got started a little late. So this sweater is technically supposed to be finished by Valentine's Day. <laughs> so as you can see, I have a long way to go yet. So, so today I think I'm home most of the day, so I'm going to try to get some work done. I think I'm actually going to start one of the sleeves today because I have to go to an event tomorrow evening with one of my daughters and it's, it's going to require me to just sit for three hours and wait, basically. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that would be a good time to plow through some of the body because you don't have to think about it. So I think today I'm going to start on one of the sleeves. So I basically have a week to knit the two sleeves and the rest of the body. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot of knitting this week. But I think I can get it done, and I know that once this is done, I'm going to wear this all the time. And I've never knit myself a fingering weight sweater before, just because I knew it would be an incredible time commitment. But boy, it is nice. It, for one thing, the yarn is gorgeous. But because it's so lightweight, but it's still going to be so warm, it's, it's not bulky, it's just so nice. So I am super, super happy with this. And you can see the pattern is stunning. So I really enjoyed the color work. I love doing color work. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna be so happy when this is finished and I know I'll be wearing it all the time. So um, yeah, so that's what's been taking all of my time lately. So hopefully within the week it will be finished. And then I can get back to some other projects. And then I also need to start a new sweater for Annie. So yeah, but that has been taking a lot of my time. And honestly, I could not be happier with it. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that I got the chance to test knit it and to get that yarn support. It was just, it was such a big gift. It just felt like Christmas when that yarn arrived. <laughs> so special. So I'm very grateful to her. And yes, she is a lovely human. 
So just a couple more little things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, some upcoming projects and um, a gift that I received for Christmas. So um, for upcoming projects. So little Annie's going to need another cardigan very soon. So I'm thinking of knitting this one next. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing it in either a, like a lilac color or a pale pink. I just find with little girls, so many of their clothes are pink. So the pink just kind of goes with everything. I would love to make her a little white cardigan too, um, but I haven't really picked one yet. There is this one in the book that is kind of cute with some lace on the sleeves and around the bottom there. But yeah, I'll be looking for some cute little girl sweaters. So if you have a favorite little girl's knitting pattern that you love, I would love to hear about it because now that I know it's a girl, <laughs> I want to knit all the little girly things so but I thought this one is very cute and would be cute for spring because it's like a little coat so now I'll probably do a different hat more like a bonnet style hat but but the coat's really cute so so that's something that I really would like to get working on another thing that I wanted to do which I don't know if I'm gonna have time for now with the test knit was I wanted to make her one of these little little sweater vest sort of um, the pattern's called one I've knit this before so it, it's really easy it's like one needle what does it say one skein one needle one size one piece one button one day to make and really I made it once before and it was super quick and like like it says one size needle one skein of yarn and yeah so it's really cute and I, I think for this time of year for Annie, this is just a really cute little piece to put over like a sleeper or something just to keep her extra warm. So I actually wanted to make this in this red for Valentine's Day. Now this red does not look as nice on, on the camera as it does in person. It looks kind of orange on the camera. It's not, it's a really nice cherry red. But I thought it would be cute to make it in the red and then she could wear it with her little hat. <laughs> so, yeah. So if by chance I get that test knit done early, <laughs> which I don't know, it's not looking promising right now, I will make her one of these before Valentine's Day. But if I don't get the red one finished, I might just make like a little white one that she can wear with anything. But I thought the red would be cute for Valentine's Day. So anyways, I would really like to make her a couple of these because uh, I think they're very useful at this age. Now, from what I remember, this is a free pattern, but it's the zero to three month size. And I think she has um, redone the pattern for bigger sizes, but it's a paid for pattern. But I would highly recommend this. This is a great little shower gift too, because it knits up really fast, because it's a worsted weight and um, yeah, it's just a really easy pattern, but it's really cute when it's finished. And like I said, I think it's just a perfect little layering piece to put over a, a sleeper or something to keep them warm and cozy. <laughs> so that's an upcoming project too, possibly. And I think I just have two more things to talk about. So, and I just realized I forgot something that I wanted to talk to you about. I'm just wondering, I'm going to go get it. I'll take my microphone off and go get it. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to grab something that I got for Christmas that I meant to show you. So, yeah, so for Christmas, my family had asked if there was anything that I would like for Christmas. And they wanted to, me to make a list of things. So, um, one thing I did really want was some um, yarn to make myself a sweater. Now, this was before all the test knit uh, thing happened but um, I've always wanted to make myself a low piece sweater and um, you know yarn is pricey so I thought well if I can put that on my Christmas list um, maybe my family members could go together even and pick it up for me and anyways my parents ended up buying the yarn that I was looking for or hoping for and so I have a nice bag just full of let low be <laughs> Which is so exciting. I 
Oh, I've always wanted a Let Low Be sweater. So, so originally I was looking at making the Radari sweater. I love the color work on this sweater. There's a lot of projects on Ravelry and they all look stunning when they're finished. So I kind of asked for the yarn based on this pattern. But then when I really got looking at this pattern, it seems like the sizes are really small. So let me see here. You can see the size chart right there. Hopefully you can't see too much else. But for the largest size, which is an extra, extra large, the chest size is 111 centimeters, which, let me see, I have to get my tape measure out because I don't know that in inches. <laughs> Let's see. So 111 centimeters is a 43 and a half inch chest. And I'm like, that's an extra, extra large. That seems not all that large to me. And that, I think that is the finished size of the largest um, size on this pattern. The other thing is it doesn't really say, like it doesn't say finished size, or is this your bust size? And then there's no schematic. So now I'm a little hesitant to make this because I really, don't know how this is going to fit. So I was just really surprised that that was the largest size. And there's just not a lot of information as to whether that is your bust size or if that's the finished size. So I think I'm going to look for a different pattern, but I definitely want something similar to this. And I know Jennifer Steingas has a lot of color work ones and she has a good size range. So I think I'll look at her stuff and see if I can find something that will work with this yarn. But anyways, this is the main color. So I think I have nine of these. So it's a very dark gray. And, oh, I wish I could remember the name of this color. Let's see. It looks like it's 0058. I think it's like dark gray Heather. And then one of the contrast colors is this lighter gray, which is color numbers. 0056 and then this color which I love this color this is color number 1701 and it's the fjord blue color oh and I think this was the light, light gray heather and then the last one is 1700 which is air blue I think it'll be a really nice wintry looking color work sweater. So I'm super excited about this. And I was all ready to cast this on or to try to find a pattern to cast on. And then I got the test knit. So this has just been sitting now, but this will be a beautiful classic let lopey sweater that I'm so excited about. So yeah, I'm happy to have received that and it was a wonderful gift and my mom was kind of surprised that I was so happy about getting something that for Christmas that required a lot of work afterwards <laughs> and I'm like but it's not really work for me knitting is not work knitting is fun and it makes me happy and and I'm like just think of all the entertainment value in all of this like how many hours of entertainment is in this bag of yarn <laughs> so anyway so I was very happy to receive that so the other thing I received which it's not technically knitting related, but kind of. So um, my son had asked me if there was anything I wanted. And so, so for those of you who followed me before and know, I work at a camp in the summertime. And while I'm there, I, as part of my job, I have a golf cart. So I tend to just go all over camp all the time in my golf cart. But I was thinking that this summer I didn't want to do that anymore because I find you get a little bit lazy because you can just hop on the golf cart and go everywhere. So I decided that this summer I'm gonna buy myself a bike because my girls have bikes at camp and they ride their bikes everywhere. And I thought it'd be nice if we could ride together. And um, I love riding there because I don't really like bike riding on the roads. I don't feel safe. I'm always worried someone's gonna hit me. But at camp, that's not gonna happen. So 
I thought I'm gonna get myself a bike this summer and then I can ride my bike to the beach in the afternoon and I'll just use my golf cart when I'm working because I need to use it when I'm working in case there's any sort of emergency so so anyways I'm gonna buy myself a bike this spring so I thought well if I have a bike and I'm at camp and I want to go to the beach to do my knitting I'm gonna need some way to get my knitting to the beach right <laughs> because that that's always the most important thing right how are we gonna transport the knitting so I said to my son you know I'd really love a basket to go on the front of my bike so I can put all my knitting in my bike basket to go to the beach. So anyways, he found this cutest basket. Still got a tag on, of course, because it's winter and I can't use it right now. But it just hooks on your handlebars. So when I get to the beach, I can just unhook it and take my basket full of my knitting <laughs> to the beach. Is this not the most perfect thing for a knitter? <laughs> It's quite big. It's gonna hold a project for sure, or two or three. So anyways, I am so happy about this. I think it's the cutest thing. And I think it's just so convenient that you don't have to like screw it onto your bike. You can just hook it on and take it off. So, yep, I'm happy about that. Anyways, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you for joining me today and hopefully you enjoyed some of the projects that I'm working on. And yeah, so you can come and check me out on Instagram again at a finch's nest. You can also go on to Ravelry. We have a group there which is not active at all. And most days I forget to check it, but maybe if it was busier, I would check it. So if you go to Ravelry under the groups tab, you can search a finch's nest and you'll find it there. And anyways, I hope you have um, a great week and you get lots of knitting time. And until I see you next time, I hope you have fun with all your knitting projects. Take care and I'll see you soon.